Well, hello again. So hopefully you've already watched uh, the first part of how to write the planning commentary, where we went over how to write um, 1A and 1B. And this video is going to be on how to write 1C. So I believe that you would get more out of this if you had out your handbook. And um, that way you could get to look at your rubrics and at the, at the prompts as you needed to. This is for both elementary literacy and elementary math. As a reminder, we will sometimes refer to the subject specific emphasis. And that is because the subject specific emphasis is something that is different between the literacy and the math. So often, instead of reading all of the different parts of your subject-specific emphasis for literacy or math, I'll just say the SSE. And whenever I say that, then you need to be thinking about your own SSE. We talked about how to find your SSE by looking at the uh, first rubric and seeing the bulleted items, or you can actually look in prompt 1B itself. We also talked last time about what the different prompts asked and talked about how it was important not to confuse what the prompts were asking. And that our rule of thumb is that if you think you've already answered something, you're probably wrong. So um, we're going to jump right in uh, to talking about um, how to write uh, 1C. So 1C asks us to explain how our lesson plans build um, on each other. So like for instance, how does uh, your first day prepare students for the second day? And how does that prepare day uh, prepare for the the, the next day and all of that. And um, you are to explain that based on the SSE, whatever your SSE is. So if you'll look in your um, uh, handbook and take a look at 1C, you can see what your own particular question is. Although I do have both um, uh, one C for uh, math and 1C for literacy in this PowerPoint. So uh, 1C, explain how, explain, that's important, not identify, explain. So I want you to think about how explain is different from describe. And so it is because explain talks more about a process. So explain how your plans build on each other to help students make connections between SSE, your SSE, to build understanding of mathematics. So my suggestion is to start out with um, take a paragraph, your first paragraph, and talk about how your first lesson prepares students for the second lesson. And don't just say, my first lesson gets students ready for the second lesson. Provide evidence of that. What about your first lesson prepares students for the second lesson? Go to and refer to your lesson plans and say, as you can see in lesson one, we're doing this, and that helps them get ready for lesson two. But not only does how lesson one prepare them for lesson two, how does lesson one address the SSE? Justify what you're saying. Don't just say it. Make sure you say how, how. How will you use learning tasks and materials to lead students to make clear and consistent connections? So here we've talked about lesson one in the first paragraph. How lesson one prepares students for lesson two, how it addresses the SSE. You need to talk about the learning task and materials and how that makes clear and consistent connections. 
in the next paragraph, start out first by saying, how does lesson two build on lesson one? So what we talked about in the first paragraph was how does lesson one prepare lesson two? But this is a little different. How does lesson two build on lesson one? And so that's important. Then justify what you said. How does this lesson, lesson two, address the SSE? How will you use learning tasks and materials to lead students to make clear and consistent connections? And then how does this lesson prepare students for lesson three? So that's pretty good. I want you to repeat that over and over again for each lesson. So you want a paragraph for lesson one, for two. So if you've got five lessons, you need to have five paragraphs, you see. So um, follow that same procedure. So the next one would be describe how lesson three builds on lesson two. And then how does this lesson prepare students for lesson four? All right. So, yeah, it's going to be long, but, you know, you got to be writing something. It's got to be 10 pages. So this is 1C, and this student did a good job. She has gone through and she has bolded um, conceptual understanding and procedural fluency, mathematic reasoning, because those are the SSE. And so she's, she's doing that because she wants the score to very easily see the evidence. Um, the worst thing you want is your score saying, where, what, 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 and be confused. You, you want, they want them to be able to really see it. So look how she starts out. This lesson segment builds on each other. So she's looking at because it's what's explain how your plans build. And she goes into an explanation about that during lesson one, goes on and on and on. And she talks about how it leads into lesson two. And then moving forward to lesson two, how they're going to do that. And then she continues on, and notice how she's always putting in what she needs to talk about the conceptual understanding, the procedural fluency, all of those important things. So this is 1C for literacy. And this one is explain how your... Um, Explain how your plans build on each other <clears throat> to help students make connections between the essential literacy strategy uh, to comprehend or compose text. <clears throat> so you've got to decide if you're going to have an essential literacy strategy that's for comprehending text or composing text. Then the related skill that supports use of that strategy in meaningful context. So <clears throat> in paragraph one, just like in the math one, you're going to describe how lesson one prepares students for lesson two. You're going to make that connection between the essential literacy strategy and the related skills. And then how did you help students make a connection? And then how can you, how will task and materials um, you use tasks and materials to end, have students independently apply. Now, this is brought in because it's important to your specific rubric. And again, describe how lesson two builds on lesson one, your connections to the literacy strategy, and then there's that word, how do you want the students to, you know, be able to learn to independently apply? How's it? So you continue just like the math people do. The next paragraph would be about lesson three and um, how it prepares students to do the process. Here's an example of, of um, someone's answer. It's very good. It's pretty long, but it needs to be because this is the heart of the rubric uh, that we're getting um, evaluated on. So she talks about how the plans build on each other the first day, what they're doing. And she didn't go through and do the bolding on the 
SSE. Uh, but imagine how uh, much more striking and easy would, it would be to find uh, the SSE if you were a score and that were bolded here. But uh, nevertheless, uh, because she's followed the structure that I gave her, um, this is very well um, organized. Uh, look, the first day, the second day, the third day. And we're not trying to be creative writers here. So it's okay to, to write that way. I think sometimes we're afraid that we're write, not writing fancy enough when actually uh, that kind of writing is too nuanced and we want our writing to be really obvious and clear. So this is where we get to rubric one. This is the math one. And uh, here it's important to note that you want to make sure everything is aligned. So your standards led you to your objectives and your objectives led you to your learning task and your material, and they all fit together nicely. Um, so you want to check alignment. That's real important. Uh, a two happens when, when students make uh, the connections between um, these uh, SSE, but it's, it's very vague. Um, a three... This is where your, your plans build on each other and there are clear connections, but to one SSC, that's the difference between that and here. This demonstrates how lessons build on each other with clear and consistent connections to both SSE. So if you're a math person, when you write uh, prompt one, you want to make sure you've got clear and consistent connections and that you deal with uh, concepts and mathematical reasoning or problem solving. To get to a five, you need to have the four. And to get uh, to the five, on top of having that, you need to explain how um, the students are, are going to use the learning tasks, um, how the, excuse me, how uh, they, as the teacher candidates, are going to use the learning tasks and materials to lead the students to make clear. So it's not just a matter of you making the connection, saying, okay, boys and girls, look at this and see how this works, see how these are connected. So when you're telling them, that's a four. But when you get them to say it, it's a five, right? So you say, who can see how these things are connected? And the student raises his hand and he answers. There you go. That's your five. Same thing with rubric one on the literacy learning. Um, check for alignment. You want to make sure your connections aren't vague, but that they are clear. And you want to show how they build on each other to support one SSE for a three, to support both SSE for a four, and then how to get the students to independently apply their literacy strategy and related skills. That's how you get your five. So I suggest that you take time now to write prompt 1C. Stop the recording, write 1C, and compare it with the understanding rubric level progressions with your rubric 1 looking at all of prompt one now that you've written A, B, and C. Then after that, come back and let's talk about prompt two. Have a good day.